Now in the last video we saw how to see routes inside of the browser, but this really only tells part of the story. And when I mean that, I mean that this only tells you really what you can see. And so it's important to have an idea on what's going on in the background. So uh, there's a few ways to do that. First way is to go into your config directory and there you'll have a file called routes.rb. And so this will show you all the routes that your application is currently using. Now this may seem a little bit confusing because we've already seen that there are a number of different routes that are available, uh, but right here it looks like we only have one. And what this is, is Rails has a neat kind of syntactic sugar called resources that has seven different routes all inside of here. So if you're going to use standard RESTful principles, then you can just do resources, symbol projects and what this will do is it'll have all of your different crud routes uh, that are all have the standardized naming convention right here now this is great and for many times this is very helpful however what happens if you want to see all of your routes and you don't want to have to see this resources sign then you can actually come into the console right here and I'm going to end our uh, our session and see what the routes actually look like. Give us some plenty of room by typing in rake routes and this will pull in all the routes for the application and give a really detailed breakdown and I'll, we, we can go column by column on what this means. So here you can see all the routes for application and you can see right here a prefix. Now this prefix is really cool because what it's going to let us do, and we'll learn about this in one of the upcoming videos, is use this as a shortcut inside the application. So this prefix will mean we can type in projects underscore path and that will take us to the projects path inside the application or new underscore project underscore path and that will take us to our new form. So this is a prefix that we can use in the actual code. So this is very helpful and I look this up quite a bit when I'm building out applications. The next thing it has is this verb and this is short for the HTTP verb and it has all of the different actions inside of each one of the routes. If you're familiar with HTTP verbs and you can kind of gloss over this, but if you're not, it's very helpful. And I'll give you a short breakdown. The get verbs are when you're returning a value or values from a database. So a good example is if you go to slash projects, this is going to be a get request and it's gonna bring back all of the different projects that we have. Post is when you want to create a new record in the database. And you can see right here, if you highlight this entire row, this is mapped to the create method inside of our projects controller. I'll go into this last column here shortly. Uh, so post is when you're wanting to create a new record in the database. The next one, which is patch and put, uh, these actually are both mapped to the same exact method. Both of these are HTTP verbs, but uh, some of sometimes uh, Rails really likes kind of doing things their own way, so you have both options in there. Uh, you don't really have to worry about this from a development point of view. Just know that it works, and they're both mapped to the update controller method. And so patch is going to, and patch input, are always going to have to deal with editing a different value in the database and then lastly is delete and with delete you can see this one's probably the most easy to know what it does it's mapped to the destroy method in the controller and it deletes a record in the database so whenever you're building an application and you need to know all the different routes that are available this shows you all the information that you need everything from what prefix to put in the code what the HTTP verb is, the URI pattern. So this is a URI pattern means what you would type into the uh, into your URL bar in the browser. And then lastly, 
the controller and the action. So this shows that these are all in our projects controller and then it shows what one of the associated methods are there. So if we switch the code really quick and go to our projects controller, you can see each one of these methods that's over here, index, create, new, edit, show, all of these are all methods that were created by our scaffold. And so each one of these are associated not only here in the file and in the route, but then lastly, they're also, like we've already seen, all inside of the view. So this fits in well with the Rails uh, kind of configuration and convention type of uh, setup for applications where you have a very specific naming structure that may seem odd at first, but just know that it works very nicely. And when you run scaffolds, it all happens automatically. When you do it manually, then uh, some of these have to be mapped uh, by yourself. But it's a very, it's really good to know what each one of these does. Now, one other thing you may notice in the scaffolds that this does is each one of the routes gets placed as a comment on top of the method. So this gives you a really good idea of what you can do. So for example, for projects, you can just type in slash projects or slash projects.json. So this lets you know that if you want to build an API or something like that and return JSON values for your project index action, that that's already built in. So that should give you a pretty good idea on how, so how routing is set up using standard CRUD and RESTful principles. In the next video, we're going to get into how to customize routing in Rails and show you a number of different options that you can use.